Good afternoon. Welcome to the SEO Model United Nations. We are now in our third session, which will be all about the debate process, the rules of procedure, and sharing a model United Nations. This afternoon, we have invited two speakers who will be speaking before us. Allow me to introduce them. Our speakers are both graduates from Xavier University at Ateneo de Cagayan with a degree in Bachelor of Arts in International Studies. They are both former education and culture attaches of Ateneo Diplomatic Corps and co-founders of Xavier University Model United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our speakers for today, Mr. Ted Lago and Ms. Rona McCarthy. The second one is the upcoming Liceo MUN, and it's, a, and it's a more than a prestigious honor that such universities are handling it. Only two in the entire Mindanao are in the Oro City, and I'm more than happy that you guys are handling it. But before anything I do, I'd like to also emphasize between the relations of an international studies student and the MUN. As an international studies student and the MUN, this is where the brink of destruction or eternal peace and prosperity are in between your hands, especially as delegates. How so? Wala ko char, char, wala ko nang ano, trying to put some sugary words, but it's, it is the reality. Politics really do have, have a role in the local, regional, national, and international levels. How so? I'd like to give you some three aspects. First of all, the economics, in the economics, social, and security reasons. For example, in the economics, you have to understand the reasons why the strait, the strait of Hamas or the strait between Iran and Saudi Arabia, if I'm correct, if I'm correct that, was, that was the strait of Hamas. You have to understand why such economic reasons between Iran, Saudi Arabia, United States, and the role of Iraq and the role of the United Kingdom as, a, as, the, as the best friend of, of, the, of the United States of America. Please bear with me. I really quite speak fast because in the end, you have to learn to speak fast under one minute. So please bear with me. Secondly, the social aspect. You have to understand why in the Human Rights Council or the HRC or the UNHRC, you also have, you have to understand how far can abortion be given? How far is human rights? How far is given women's right in giving the abortion for the LGBTQ issue? Because I don't have the issues in the society, in the social aspects. Lastly, lastly, in the security aspects, this is my most favorite. Which is more important in your countries? Morality or security? As an international study student, these, these are the kind of topics you have to face, these are the kind of reasons, these are the kind of issues, the kind of reasons, the kind of debates, the kind of issues that you really have to face and debate upon within yourselves and within your moral compass. How so? Again, which is more important, security or morality? How so? If you remember the Syrian war between ISIS, Bashir al-Assad, Syria government, the United Nations, etc., etc., you have to understand so much things. For example, the immigration crisis, the refugee crisis going to Europe. You notice that before the before the refugee crisis, Europe was in peace. The European Union was cool. Economic there were so much economic reasons for that. However, during the during the uh, migration crisis, the European was like human rights, human rights, human rights. Muslims are not terrorists. Fine, that's true. Not everyone's a, not everyone's a Muslim. Not everyone's a terrorist. That is true as well, logically speaking to it. But ever since France, UK, and Germany accepted the refugees. Unfortunately, yes, there's been a rise of crimes, bombings, shootings. So, just 
more important, morality, taking care of everyone, or the security of your very nation and your people. These are the issues in the MUN. These are the issues in the UN, ASEAN level, European level. So that's my favorite question to everyone. Which is more important, morality, ensuring human rights is given to everyone, or security of your own people? Security? Are you sure? Look what's happening, look what's happening to Hungary. Look what's happening to Poland when they started when they started refusing the access of refugees, backlashes. And now the economic, the brink of the European Union is on the line once again, other than Brexit. Security, fine, human rights. So what's the role of human rights right now? What's the role of the UN? Mm -hmm. These are the issues. You also have to consider constitutional laws, and you also have to consider international laws. You also, you also have to consider the differences of the UNGA and the UNSC Security Council. Resolutions in the UNGA, non-binding or binding? It's non-binding. Security Council, binding or non-binding? It's binding, but with the P5, the permanent five, they follow them. Again, aspects, politics, relations, organizations, politics, politics, blah, blah, blah. Which is more important? Security, morality, rights, Tradition. These are the questions in the MUN. And for international students to debate and tackle, there's no standard answer. But in the MUN, you have to find that standard answer. Or, what's the purpose of the UN Charter? This is the beauty of politics, the beauty of MUN, the beauty of international studies. And you can tell by now that I'm a radical and I'm free towards it. Rona is a low-key type. So, again, I'm very happy, and I hope I'm able to show some more image about the MUN. So without further ado, can we now begin? Now with the modern editions, the history of the model UN. Yes? So in the history of model UN, I'll be showing you a little bit of aspects about it from the international, from the international arena down to the Philippines. Now, the history of the MUN, what is the model UN? But before anything else, this is thanks to the Philippine MUN community. This is not provided by me, it's provided by them, so they have the credits. But first of all, it's an academic simulation of the UN. We all know that. The concept began in 1927 at Harvard University. Before the UN, can anyone please give me the answer? What was the UN back then? League of Nations, that's correct. A proven method for teaching on international relations. In this third aspect, I wanted to share to you about my thesis. However, it will take so much time. My thesis was purely dedicated about the MUN. Yes, I risked my college thesis for the MUN. But I will not divulge more about it. It will take so much time. What do we do in the MUN? Students will take on the shoes of a diplomat and lobby your country's policy. If you remember your position paper, that is your policy. Debate about global issues that and collaborate with other delegates. Collaborate is a very scary word. Sometimes it can be backbite, backstab, hidden politics, under the table agreements. Collaborate a little bit. Next. What do we discuss? Environment, human rights, peace, and security. Which is more important? Which is more important? Sometimes even the UN level, which is more important to tackle? ISIS, the rights of everyone, or the growing Amazon issue? Which should be the first priority? Again, beautiful UN. Next. <laughs> Why do MUN? Researching and writing. I do hope you guys have prepared your position paper with legitimate resources. Second, public speaking and debating and negotiating. Negotiating under the table. Pwede naman. You're not, you're not prohibited by it. Pwede naman. Are just a few things learned, discussed, and practically by doing model in the nations. Next. Now, model UN in the Philippines. Now, next. In the model in the Philippines, this is the start, this is the first time. By 2010, the first Ateneo model UN was in the, in Ateneo Manila, they started the first MUN in 2010. 
UP Diliman is started in 2013. Uh, University of Asia and Pacific is started in 2014. 2016, De La Salle, Green Hills. 2019, Xavier School. A completely different, uh, it's, it's not us. This is from uh, Xavier School back in Metro Manila. Next. The very first M in the Philippines was in 1998 by the College of St. Benil. 2014, by, uh, by UST, 2015, De La Salle University, 2015, UE University of the East, 2017, San Agustin, 2018, Papua, 2019, LPU. These are the local MUNs. Moving on. Next, we have more as well, in 2013, the first Desmarinas, 2016, Southern Luzon, 2019, Cavite MUN, there's more. Then lastly, in the Mindanao level, Besides in Mindanao level, 2016, the first XUMUN, 2017, University of, of St. Lasalle, 2019, first Silliman University, 2019, first Central Philippine MUN. When will the Sayo MUN be part of the map? It will depend on the current administration. And I'm really quite happy and excited that one day, the Sayo MUN will be part of this map. Next. Forget about it. Before we, continue, before we continue everything else, everyone please chill down, relax yourself. Yes, I can feel the tension already. Chill, Jesus! So without any further ado, everyone, please help me welcome my colleague, my protege, and my successor. Please help me welcome again, a big round of applause to Ms. Rona McArthur.
relations between your countries and your assigned countries. So, and then another statement here is a diplomat's career is fulfilling and diverse. Yes, when you are assigned to a particular country, you need to learn their, um, you need to learn the language, their culture. You need to engage and be able to interact with the people, know their politics and way of life. So, it's kind of challenging, yes, but in some way, it's very fulfilling if your passion really is to represent your fellow Filipino abroad. And there's um, there's actually this one person, he is a professor of global studies and international relations. He stated that a student or a student who is aiming to become a diplomat, the career path for diplomacy is really very unique and wonderful because you are able to understand the different cultures of the other state. Um, it's, <laughs> okay, especially if it is included uh, the complexity of lives of the other state or the assigned countries you are able to participate or to represent. So next, please. Yes, one of the main duties, as, as I've said, is to represent your own countries, promote your people's interests, promote the Filipinos' interests abroad, protect the OFWs. So those are just the basic language, and there's a lot of things uh, you need to do as a diplomat and very critical, yes, very delicious, totally dangerous in some point. <laughs> Security dangerous, no, I think, but you have the, how do you call this, your bodyguards, <laughs> or the <laughs> diplomatic staff who will protect you. There are cases, mom, girl, um, I have friends, they wanted to become a diplomat, but their concern is their security, because, oh, okay, during the terrorist attacks, one of the main, let's say, target, <laughs> is the consular offices, the ambassadors. So the, the main concern is the security of the life of being a diplomat. However, the profession of being a diplomat is very fulfilling if you're really a passion with Nemo is to serve the Filipino people and represent them abroad. So these are the basic skills you need if you wanted to aim for career in diplomacy. First is leadership, um, leadership skills. The negotiation. I'm talking about leadership. You don't just need to become a good leader for you to become a diplomat. You need a set of well-rounded skills such as public speaking, be able to be able to lobby and negotiate. As I've said, for the negotiation skills, because this is important for a diplomat for you to be able to come to a compromise if you're um, facing problems or facing with a crisis situation, which will be experienced later on. So, and then next is the cross-cultural awareness. Cross-cultural awareness because if we're in a model United Nations simulation, you'll be able to, how do you call this thing? Um, you'll be able to provide the topic agendas which are very diverse for in the international stage, um, in the international community like issues with regards to the, uh, what do you call it, territorial dispute, the HIV, the issues, with trade wars with China and China and the U.S., and then more on security matters, environment, human rights, and a lot of more. So the issues in Model United Nations is not just about a specific aspect or one thing, one thing like environment, environmental lang siya. So there's a plethora of policy issues or political issues, mostly politics with siya. So you need to be got to have this skill cross cultural awareness for you to be able to engage to debate your ideas with the body during the simulation, and then written communication skills. Of course, this is basic for you to become uh, a diplomat. You need to have a professionally you need to know how to professionally communicate with the other delegates, especially with the governments or the officials of your government. Research skill. Uh, this is very important if you wanted to have a successful or very effective MUL experience. You need to do research prior a week or two weeks before, so that you'll be able to diverse or you'll be able you'll be able to share your thoughts with your fellow delegates. And then foreign language skills for MUL. It's not necessary, of course, but for diplomats, most diplomats are either bilingual or trilingual, multilingual as well. Because if they wanted to immerse in the particular country where they are assigned to, of course, you need to know their language so that you can understand the people. So for the Xavier, I guess we are required to take three classes of French, right? French, two classes.
for fre French, yes, for Ampola, if you are a politics major, let's say, track A. But if you're a foreign language major, you can take another foreign language and more. So these, yeah, these are the main, uh, main skills that a diplomat must have for him or her to be able to represent the Philippines as well. Next slide, please. So here, for the flow of the committee session, so you need to focus and get familiar with this flow. First is the roll call. So the roll call is the first order of the business. The first order of the business. The roll call here, the one who will um, do the roll call is the rapporteur. Rapporteur is mainly secretary version of the member of the dais. So the rapporteur will announce, or let's say call each member state in alphabetical order. So. For you delegates, you will answer or say either present or present in voting. When you say present, that means you are allowed to use abstain during your voting procedures. Hello, welcome. So for the present, you, you, there are three options you need to cast um, for the voting. There is either you are in favor, you are opposed, or you can use abstain. Abstain is it's either no or yes, so it's something in the middle, something neutral. For the abstain, you can't use it in procedural matters, but only during the substantive matters like voting resu voting for the resolution and voting for amendments. And then for present in voting, there are only two, uh, two votes you need to cast. It's either yes, no, you're in favor, you're opposed, I, or me. So that's it, so there's only if you're asked, Delegate of Russia, Mr. Chair, the Delegate of Russia is present. Mr. Chair, the Delegate of Russia is present in voting. So again, present is you have the right of state. Present in voting is you don't have the right of state. So yes or no, always. So that's it for the roll call. And then there are two purposes for the roll call, actually. It served as, uh, it served as a, your official attendance for the delegate, and at the same time, it determines the quorum, which is, the mandatory minimum number of delegates to be present in a committee in order to begin the session. So here for our session later will be General Assembly, right? So there's um, there must be 50% of the population plus one in order for us to cast a vote. So that will be the mandatory number. So before we proceed to the setting of agenda. So if we don't come with a mandatory number, we can't proceed to the next, uh, let's say, Yes, for setting up the setting up the agenda. Rona, yes. I just wanted to ask: um, Is is a two thirds quorum supposed to be followed, or half plus one only? For is that general, already two thirds? Half plus one. Assembly, mom, it's oh. 50% plus one, so okay. half plus one. But if we'll, you will have the security council, it will be two thirds. Oh, two -thirds I see. okay. Because in the general assembly, the mostly the voting procedure will need third majority votes. However, in GA, it's only 50% plus four. So that's for the GA. And then, yes, after the quorum, after if we're already in the quorum, we will have to set the topic agenda. So here, the topic agenda, usually in our experiences in Model UN, the topic agenda is already released a week or two weeks prior to the conference. And there's always two. That's why we... <laughs> Then propose to have two topics agenda so that you have the chance to set it like to raise a motion to set the agenda. Like, take for instance, Mr. Chair, the delegate of Sudan would like a motion to set the topic agenda into two one if you wanted to discuss the second topic agenda, or one two if you wanted to discuss the first topic agenda. So, yes, in the model UN, it's usually two topics agenda. So, the delegates, you are the one who will decide which agenda you wanted to discuss during that citation. Yes, for about there are cases also that if there are two motions, if another delegate wish to discuss for the first topic agenda, then another delegate wish to discuss the second topic agenda, there will be a speaker for both sides. So, the other delegate will explain why or she or she wanted to discuss the first topic and the other delegate will discuss or explain also or try to convince the entire body why he wanted to discuss the other topic. And then after the speaking time, so you'll have to proceed to the voting procedure and then vote if 
you prepare to discuss the first topic or the second topic. So majority vote, 50 percent plus one. So after the setting of the agenda, you will be proceed with the delivery of policy statements. So here, the all delegates need to prepare an opening speech, which is usually set to 60 seconds, stating their country's position and on the general committee agenda. So what will happen here? It will be alphabetical. So who's first? Um, so Bangladesh. After the setting the agenda, the chair will now announce that we will proceed to the delivery of policy statements. So automatically, the delegate to Bangladesh will come here in the podium to, let's say, uh, to present his or her delivery or front, uh, policy statement, rather. So for, after that, everyone is have delivered their policy statement. We're going to proceed for the general debate. General debate is where the moderated caucus or the unmoderated, unmoderated caucus took place. However, the substantive debate is where you're going to most uh, to lobby, to negotiate, or to raise amendments for your resolution paper. So always remember that substantive matters always talk about the resolution itself or the draft resolution. For the delivery policy statements, that are they allowed? Like 60 seconds, but they're not yet finished with the time. There's still 30 seconds left. Are they allowed to yield it to the chair? Yeah, so here's the case. 60 seconds, and you have more than 30 seconds or 25 seconds left. You need to yield your remaining time either, which you're going to discuss later, to the chair, either to your fellow delegates, and to the floor, yes. So, for the code of conduct, I'll be discussing the rules, the norms that is expected for the delegate in the Model UN conference. So I'll be using photos of my previous Model UNs. That's in Ateneo de Manila for AMON 7. That's their seventh year. Seventh, yes, yeah, seventh AMON. So first, to successfully represent the character of a UN diplomat, delegates are obliged to wear corporate attire and limit to mutual colors. So corporate attire, that's Western, uh, like Western business casual attire. So you need to wear formal one and then limit it to mutual shades only. So no like light colors, too much bright or neon because it's very destructing for the other delegates, especially for the board of diet. So by the dress code, you're not allowed to wear t-shirts, your OODDs, because there is a tendency that dress code violation will automatically forfeit your position as a delegate. So you're not allowed to enter the conference now. You they're yeah, automatically forfeited for dress code violations. And then issues for MUN, of course, they respect religious diversity. So for those are brothers and sisters of Muslims, they can wear their religious attire, and that's considered. For the decorum here, diplomats etiquette should be highly observed throughout the entire model UN conference. And then during the debates in caucus, delegates must carry a well-defined code of formality in addressing the committee, so you're not allowed to trash talk other delegates, although in some cases in as Security Council it usually happens because Security Council is full of dramas. However, in general assembly we're two formal people there. So Yes, formal tone and always show respect with the board of diets. And then next will be delegates are always reminded to communicate and cooperate with other delegates and the member of the diets with utmost respect and courtesy. That's what I said. Next. So, so that photo was the Xavier University MUN first year, our first year. For the language, English is the official working language of Model UN, so formal language shall be used. Uh, excluded the colloquial terms or many like, informal words for English, like, what's the informal word of English? But, uh, excluding of all colloquial terms and informal words, so use plain English language. And the next will be, all delegates are always to refer themselves in third person. So this is a major rule that you should not, uh, you should follow. Always refer yourself in third person and not in first person. So you're not allowed to say, I move the motion, I believe that, because you are a representative of your assigned country. You are representing the 
foreign policy of your country and not your own opinion, not your own viewpoint. So always refer yourself to third person. So if you wanted to take uh, raise a motion, so the delegate of Russia moves to motion, this delegate would like to raise for ganyan, ganyan. So you're not allowed to say, I would like, Mr. Chair, I would like to do this and that. So never mention I, like Kananagiga rule, never mention I, because that is very thing sa mga chair. Very fun, Shalek. You'll be actually, how do you call this thing? Targeted. Yeah, targeted at the same time. You'll be sent, and the chair will send a note for warning. So, and then next is another, wait, a uh, foreign language, yes. Another is the word motion here. The word motion is not to be used as a verb because motion here is not a verb, but at the same time, you need. I like here an example. You need to have there's a prior verb you need to use before mentioning the, the word motion. So that these delegate moves to motion or these delegate calls for a motion. So it's very wrong to say that these delegate motion to open the table. So do not use the word motion. The proper statement or accurate statement will be delegate moves to motion or delegate calls for a motion. So either the two you can use it interchangeably. For plagiarism issues, these are the issues of plagiarism issues you need to avoid. First, verbative plagiarism. It means that using the words of an outside sources or using the words of your fellow delegate without proper citation. So if ever you're trying to, how do you call it? If you're ever to the idea, you wanted to, sh to use the other idea of your fellow delegate, always use proper citation and give credits, of course. And then second is inadequate paraphrase, adopting the ideas of outside source without acknowledging the origin of the main idea. So again, proper citation and give credits. And then material replication. So this is the very crucial. Sub when you submitted your draft resolution or your working papers that have been previously used in other academies or in your previously MUNs, so you're not allowed to use to resubmit it. However, you can actually get some ideas to present it to the body and add something or replicate or something enhance the idea, but not like the thing na katamin yung ipasa the resolution is the same thing you will submit for the board of diet. So do not use the same, let's say, position paper that you ever used before or the draft resolution or working paper. So there's yeah, do not replicate the other materials of your previous works. Next slide. Uh, yeah, for the general information, so delegates and delegation. So this picture is here in the area. This is the CDO model UN that happened here. So for delegates and delegation, days prior to the conference, each delegate is assigned to a country to represent within his or her side committee. So usually weeks before the conference, you'll be assigned a particular country. It's already, and you'll be given a primer or a student guide, study guide for the entire conference. And then delegates are assigned other, either to the Security Council, Human Rights, UNESCO, GA, or other main organs of the United Nations. So you'll be divided, you'll be assigned to a specific committee that I am for days before the event. And the delegate must be cautious not to go out of their character because some of the delegates, especially in the essay, hey. tends to be too dramatic. <laughs> yeah, they sometimes play with their emotions or carried by their emotions. So do not go out of, of your character. If you're a representative of a particular country, be as uh, be act as one, let's say, act as one. So you should always maintain good quality of debate and the negotiation. So there is one thing I experienced in Ateneo de Manila. He doesn't know that his assigned country is different. So he thought that he's representing, for example, New Zealand, and he thought is, and what he expect is Indonesia. So all his foreign policy is based on Indonesia, where in the first place, he's representing New Zealand. So our debate process there, the caucus is very, um, because of the kind of inappropriate, let's say, in a 
appropriate delegation, so he doesn't remember that he's representing New Zealand. Pala. And also, your point, own personal point of views, you're not allowed to state your personal point of views, your own opinions, your viewpoints, always refer to your country's foreign policy. So don't get biased. As a representative, do not get biased. Next. For the point of bias, usually it consists of three people, the chair, the vice chair, and the rapporteur. So yes, CDOMUN here in the SEO. The chair is the one who mainly moderates the entire session and who have the absolute parliamentary control during and over the conference. And then the vice chair is mainly the right hand of the chair who observes the appropriate conduct of each delegate, maintains proper decorum, and ensures the smooth flow of the proceedings. So however, there are tendencies that the chair would like to move. The chair is not, if you have other yeah, other, if he has to leave and other important emergencies he needs to attend to, the vice chair is the one who will act as the chair. For the rapporteur, his main duty is mainly secretariat or managerial, like taking the roll call, noting the speaker's list, and keeping track of the time. Although mostly the chair is the one who is very strict for the time of each speaker. For the notes, during the moderated caucus, moderated caucus is the formal session, you're not allowed to talk to each other. Even though you're just inches away from each other, you're not allowed to talk. That's the purpose of the notes. So the notes is, you, for example, you want to address the other delegate or you wanted to say something to the other delegates, you can raise or you can take a note and raise it so the note passer can see and then she, he or she can send it to the for the recipients for that note. So you're not allowed to talk in, unmo uh, in moderated caucus. So if you wanted to address the, the board of dais, you can <coughs> give a note to the note master. If you wanted to address the other delegate, you can always raise a note. So that's the purpose of the notes. Next. For the grievances and warnings, so here, if a delegate offends another delegate, the affected delegate may order a complaint by raising a point of grievance so to the chair and stating the intention of the offense. So if you feel that you've been embarrassed by the other delegate, you can always raise for point of grievance to that delegate and state what happens or the reason between that complaint. For the appeal, if ever the chair will have, although the chair of absolute parliamentary control, but there are instances that the chair made mistakes or they can always make um, wrong decisions during the debate process, so you can always raise an appeal to correct the decision of the chair. However, the, yes, ma'am. So, um, so that's for appeals, no? For grievances, is it publicly um, expressed in the GA, or is it? Uh, can it be a secret? It's either two things, ma'am. It's between the delegates themselves whether they wanted to publicly raise the motion or send a note to the chair. Ah, uh, okay. Either. Yes, because the main purpose here for the appeal, main for uh, the main role for the chair is to guide you with the flow of the committee. So he, the chair can also give uh, procedural recommendations, what to do next, what motion to raise. If there's no delegate who would like to raise the motion, or can he look na kayo mo and no one will raise a motion, so the sh the chair can suggest what to do next. However, if you feel that's quite wrong, so you can always raise for an appeal. But again, it's still, the last decision will come from the chair itself. Yes. Here, our favorite part. <laughs> crisis situation, which Ted will going to discuss later on. And then, okay, crisis situation here is, you'll be going to face a high pressure level of discussion. Crisis situation is you'll be given a topic that you didn't know, a topic that's not yet been revealed to you, so it's, really in a high pressure discussion because you don't know the topic and then you're going to research all the information in a rush way. So five minutes of research that presented to the body. So it's quite uh, difficult for you guys to forever have, if you wanted to proceed for a moderated caucus for the crisis situation, it will take too much time. So usually what happens is we have the unmoderated caucus, so informal, formal way of conversing with each other or 
informal way of debate. So for first is when the entire subject is faced with the crisis situation, all current deliberations, all discussion of the topic at hand will be set aside. So whatever you're doing, it will be all cancelled and set aside and prioritize the crisis situation. And usually the crisis situation, based on my experiences, the last crisis situation I had was the the terrorists are now, because I was in the UNESCO assembly, so the terrorists, the chair announced that the terrorists are now bombing all world UNESCO heritage, each continent. So the first continent was, that has been attacked is the USA, so we're all in a riot now who's going up. We're all in the riot how to solve the issue, how to come to a compromise to the terrorists just to stop the bombing. So in that case, though it's quite fictional because it never happened, right? So yeah, but you need really to conduct a prior research so that you can present your country's position during the body and then come up with a draft resolution that you're going to vote for for it to be approved and to settle the disputes or the issue. All delegates also are required to deliver one minute policy statement on the country's position with regards to the crisis being faced. So you'll be given five minutes to do research and then you prompt them for the delivery of one minute policy statement, what your country's stand about the crisis situation or what, the country, what your country's action or plan. So their decisions, you need to share it with the entire body. And then the debate the resolution also for the crisis situation must be done in urgency. So yes, procedures are usually the same, although you can request for the Board of Dias to, to move for an unmoderated caucus so that you can discuss informally and in like dali dali shama discussion and like with the moderated caucus now you need to be formally raise a motion to proceed to another activity. So Yes, that's the crisis situation. And your skill of lobbying and negotiations or to negotiate will be highly beneficial or very useful in this situation. I think that's the end. Yeah. Any, should we ask <laughs> any questions or later now? Okay. Why do you need security council so much? Because <laughs> you are in the security council and security council is really full of drama and the people there is very emotional. I'm sorry guys, it's not, it's not out of the topic, it's just a personal yes. thing that Roy and I get to debate. Because mm -hmm. that is very realistic and I'm more into liberal, idealist perspective, so very formal, but very, let's say, courteous. We'll, we'll See? Debate, we'll debate later. Yeah, we'll debate later. So any questions regarding the presentation for the process of Model UN? So. Questions, clarifications? Yes. So now you said, today we will be addressing the topic in the General Assembly of GA. Yes, which committee on this is right? Ah, the. sorry. Normally in the UNGA setting, Yes, there are committees, there are several committees within the UNGA. However, by practicing the model UN, so far there is only one committee. There is only one committee. Because in the to topic agenda itself, it's very quite specific already. Please tell me everyone is aware of the topic agendas. What is the first topic agenda? So China C, what's the second topic agenda? Uh, Ted, we actually, um, we actually talked about Maybe having one topic for the day, kay medyo na overwhelmed sila gahapon nga. So, don't, worry. don't worry, don't worry. That's why we provided two topic agendas, and that's why you, one of you, has to specifically state that they move to motion for topic agendas set to one, two. That's why we told it namo. Yes. We really want you to practice. Don't worry, we will, we will diplomatically baby feed you. Don't worry. Guys, Jesus. Calm down, chill, chill. This is not a full scale at UN lang. Yes. Okay? Again, sometimes me and all Corona will debate up front lang about City Council. GA itself. So, so yes, that's the essence actually why we gave two topics so that you yourself, delegates, can decide which topic would you want them to discuss. However, yes. I want you to...
bring up to one. The delegate of Philippines is here. Let's bring it. Uh. So yeah, if you wanted to have a debate, so maybe other delegate would raise a motion to set the topic agenda to do one and then one two, so you can experience a like debate for the other delegate to convince the body. So yes, that's the essence. That's the purpose of having two topics agenda. So don't worry, you're not going to tackle both topics. Like. During the note passing, during moderated caucus, yes, you, yes, you may communicate with one another through note passing. The person is going to give that note is called a note passer. As much as possible, I hope a bet through note passing, because in MUN we experience that sometimes. <laughs> sometimes in MUN, may mga love letters. I hope a bet. Because in the real, in the real UN, wala pa bet. Okay. And of course, diba, if it's a national MUM, there's a lot of cuties, so basi mo mo, raise mo, love letters, or love letters good. Yeah, so, if you really want to, you know, feel like it. Tinood ba na? Ka-experience po ko na yung mga pabit sa mga mon. Oh, but with the chair... Gawas na lang mo pabit, dito na sa gawas. Ayaw lang sa paan. Kana mag party party na mo paghuman diya na mo pabe. Any more experience ko ba? Ola ola ola. Any more questions? Pasin dili mo makatulog ba? Any more? We can proceed to the next presentation. Can I see any second? Any seconds? Please raise your placard. Second. Isara mo ang gusto. Delegate of Germany, second by Delegate of Germany, we shall now proceed to voting procedure. Those in favor, please raise your placard. Those in favor to proceed to the next presentation, please raise your placard. Okay. We shall now proceed to the next presentation. Okay.